Alright, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy David. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. I'm doing pretty good as well. So we are back with another video right after the last one. So basically, uh, I had my first car accident earlier this year. I mean, no, earlier this month. Sorry, so I had my first car accident earlier this month, right? So I didn't have car insurance. And yeah, so basically I'm just gonna tell you the story of what happened. Before I delve into like the actual story, I just wanna give some background. So I got my license on September 4th of 2018 so I've been driving for just about a year I never had a learner's permit because when you're over 18 you could just uh, go take a test and get your license and just skip over the learner's permit part um, so I basically just practiced for like 30 minutes a day for like a week or two and then I took the test and I passed but yeah so I drove for like a year without any accidents so I would say that's pretty good right earlier this month I did have my first accident so let me just explain why I didn't have have insurance all right so in my personal opinion I just believe that insurance is a scam you know I believe that it's like the most massive scam in the entire United States history but that's just my opinion so why do I think that well so for example in every other major nation right health insurance is run by the government so you know citizens well-being is their first priority but in the United States our health insurance is run by corporations and big companies if you guys didn't know corporations their biggest priority is making money you know there's a bottom line so they want to deny coverage as much as possible so they can make as much money as possible so yeah you know it's just a giant Ponzi scheme you know what I mean like like there's so much money involved in the lobbying of government to just block you know healthcare from being run by the government like every other major country you know the overwhelming majority of Americans want it to be run by the government we want Medicare for all but it's just it's just too powerful the corporations are too powerful and there's there's just so much money flowing into government to block it. I do believe it'll happen eventually anyways, just because you can't stop the overwhelming majority of public opinion. And car insurance is the same thing, like they make so much money. Like the insurance industry is a 1.2 trillion dollar industry trillion with a T. It's 1.2 trillion. You can't even find online their exact profit margins because they hide it because it's so lucrative because it's such a scam. But you just need to know it's a 1.2 trillion dollar industry. That's bigger than most countries' entire economies. I actually tried to do it right, right? So in the beginning, you know, I went to like these insurance companies like State Farm. I'm like, how much would it be for a first time driver? And they told me it was literally like $260. So obviously I couldn't do that. But in the state that I live in, which is North Carolina, you're required to have insurance in order to get your license. So I did pay one month of insurance just to get the license, and then I canceled the insurance. Which of course is illegal, but you know, all I had to do was tell them, oh, I'm not driving anymore. They can't take your license away. You can have a license and just not drive, you know what I mean? So that's basically what I told them. So I didn't have to pay the 260 a month. If I had insurance and I was paying the 260 a month, I would have paid about like $2,600 by now. And it would have basically all went into the trash can. It basically would have all went into the insurance company's pockets, right? Because I never needed it. And you might be saying, well, you had your accident, so didn't you need it then? Well, I'm getting to that. So basically, why did I not have car insurance or why do I think it's a scam, right? The entire thing, the reason, the reason we're required by law to have it is because these insurance company gave millions of dollars in lobbying money so these states will pass laws that require you to have insurance right it's just such a scam if you just look at any statistics right so unless you're like a reckless person so for example the average person maybe gets into a major car accident like every 10 15 20 years right so by the time you get into a major accident in like 10 or 15 years you would have paid maybe like twenty thousand dollars to the insurance company so for example you get into a major car accident and it's ten thousand dollars to fix their entire car and your entire car, right? Well, by that time, you would have paid $20,000 in pure insurance. So even though the insurance company is covering the cost, you still end up paying way more to the insurance companies. You know, it adds up. You know, the monthly payment that you paid would have ended up being more than the total cost of the entire repair of the accident. So that's why it's just a complete scam. So now let me get into like the actual accident and what happened, right? So basically, it was a rainy day, right? So the road was kind of slippery and I was driving home and I remembered I forgot to 
could get some juice. So I wanted to go back to Walmart, which was the other way, right? So I stopped and as I was trying to make a U-turn, I looked in my rear view mirror, by the way, like I drive really safe. So I looked in my rear view mirror and I didn't see any cars, right? So I began to try to turn and then the car behind me was going way over the speed limit. Like they were going way too fast. By the time that I saw them and they saw me, it was already too late for them to make a complete stop because they were going way over the speed limit and it was rainy and the road was slippery. So it was like a one lane drive, right? So I was about to make a U-turn. They were coming super fast. And so basically uh, they just kind of swerved to the left. Um, luckily there was no cars coming the other way. Uh, so they just swerved to the left and boom, they hit my the front left area of my car, like the front left fender, fender is what it's called. So it didn't hit the lights, uh, so it wasn't like major damage, it was just bent uh, a little bit in the front left fender area. And it was a really interesting experience because I've never been in a car accident before and it was just a very unique experience because it's like your whole body just shakes, your whole body just moves, you know, from the impact. Thankfully it wasn't like a major crash or anything. But yeah, anyway, so after that he pulled to the side of the road, so I pulled to the side the road and he got out of the car he was like come on man what happened and I was just like dude you you hit me from behind like what can you possibly say right I began to like asking questions like dude what the heck were you doing why were you going so fast like why'd you hit me blah blah, blah. and that's when I found out that the guy literally didn't even speak English and his girlfriend next to him she spoke English so she just acted as a translator this whole thing the guy literally only spoke Spanish so I was in a tricky uh, situation right so even though it was their fault uh, I still couldn't call the police because if I did call the police, they will ask to see my insurance and they will find out that I have been driving without insurance, uh, which is a crime, uh, by the way. So I would have had a criminal record. So I couldn't call the police, right? But I couldn't just let them leave either because, you know, they hit my car, you know what I mean? So basically they were just trying to plead with me like, oh yeah, we're sorry, we're sorry. You know, we actually stopped for you. We could have just ran away. We want to see if you're okay, blah, blah. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, thank you for having human decency and not doing a hit and run. So I basically proposed to them. I said, okay, so here's what we need to do. We need to make a deal. So I basically tried to negotiate with them. The whole time I was threatening to call the cops, by the way, so I could have leverage. But I was like, okay, so I I'm gonna call the cops, all right? If you don't want me to call the cops, then we need to make a deal. I need $300, all right? So I basically asked for $300, which I thought was a fair deal. And even though it was a minor dent, you know, $300 is not a lot for a car accident. So I asked for $300 and they were like, oh, we don't have $300, blah, blah, blah. And we legit negotiated for an hour. It was like literally an hour in the rain, by the way. Like it just started, like in, in the middle of our negotiations, it just started pouring rain. Like I was soaked, but uh, obviously I couldn't get inside my car because then they might just leave. I had to stay out there so they knew how serious I was. Uh, and and it was just, it was just rain, you know what I mean? So what if I was soaking wet? It was just rain. But yeah, it was just, it was pouring by the way. I was just looking down, trying to like, trying to get the water out of my face so I could actually open my eyes. It, it was just, it was pouring a lot. But I think they realized because I was like just enduring the rain, I think they realized that, okay, I was really serious. Uh, so we were eventually able to work out a deal. Their counter offer was $100, which is nowhere near enough, right? So, you know, I just, I continue to threaten to call the cops, right? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna call the cops. If we don't make a deal, I'm gonna call the cops. Even though I couldn't call the cops, I had to threaten to call the cops just so I could have leverage. So I think mid negotiation they try to leave. They were like, yeah, we can't give you 300, you know, let's just discuss this later. Here's my phone number, blah, blah, blah. They try to leave. So I immediately went behind their car and took a picture of their license plate. And I was like, no, you are not leaving. We're gonna get this straight right now. And they kept asking, oh, do you need the money now? Do you need the money now? I said, oh uh, yeah, I do need the money now. We need to resolve this now. I told them, we're either gonna make a deal or I'm gonna call the cops, but we need to make it happen right here, right now. Um, so eventually after an hour of 10, Hence negotiations, we agreed upon $250. So they gave me $250 in cash and we both went our ways. Um, and I, I kind of knew they had it in cash. You know, I hate to sound stereotypical, but you know, I've worked as cashiers. You know, I've seen Hispanic people just pull out like literally like stacks of hundred bills. I don't know how they got it. Maybe it's construction. Like, I don't know what it is. Again, I hate to sound stereotypical, but in the back of my mind, I just knew they had the cash. You know what I mean? Like I've seen way too many Hispanic people just pull out straight hundreds like straight blue hundred bills I knew they had the cash which they did so yeah they gave me 250 and we shook hands and I apologized uh, that I had to do this but I had to you know I kept explaining to them you know
know, you can't hit my car, and then I'd be like, okay, thank you, have a good day. You were going too fast, and you hit my car, so, you know, you had to give me money. We had to make a deal, you know what I mean? I can't just let you off the hook. But yeah, anyways, so I took that $250. Um, I actually had a friend who owns a car repair shop, but he actually didn't do this exact type of work. Um, so he recommended me to another place, which is his friend. His friend also owned a car repair shop. So, you know, I did have some connections and they did ask it to be fixed a little bit cheaper. So in the end, uh, I fixed it for $75. Maybe if I didn't know anyone, if I didn't have connections, it probably would have cost like $100 to fix. But since I did have a little bit of connections, um, they were able to fix my car for $75. $5. But yeah, so that's basically what happened. I got 250 I used 75 of it to fix the car. Uh, so now the car is fixed. And yeah, so that's basically the story of my first car accident. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something if you ever get into an accident. You know, you have to use leverage in negotiations, whether that means threatening or what. You just have to have leverage and that's how you negotiate. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, more videos coming soon. And until next time, peace. Thank you.